Welcome to round five of the Irish Tarmac Rally Championship. We're here in Donegal for the dual Donegal International Rally, possibly the biggest event Ireland has to offer. Few hours till things kick off. Drivers are feeling a little bit of nerves ahead of a massive weekend. We are raring to go. A huge weekend is in prospect, one which has been highly anticipated since the 2018 event drew to a close. The Donegal Rally now has a worldwide reputation and attracts a stellar entry year on year. Fans flock from far and wide to witness fierce competition on some of the most breathtakingly stunning scenic stages. stages are lined up over three days of competition and after months of preparation we are finally ready to go. Let's find out how our top contenders are feeling. If I can get into a good rhythm at some point today because tomorrow are the familiar stages for everybody else and I know I'm going to be at a disadvantage so we need to be sharp today. Declan home event and the atmosphere already. For you how special is it? It's really special from Monday on we'll be talking about this rally for next year so that's the way it is you know it's the big hype of the year so we're here the weather's great and really looking forward to it. Yeah we haven't got much of a test but I'm not too bothered about that. Uh, there's great competition here, great atmosphere and uh, yeah really looking forward to get going here. Let's switch to our Irish Tarmac Championship contenders now. First up, the man who is second overall in the series this year, Alistair Fisher. You know, we've always went pretty well here, but you know you can't take the rally for granted. You have to concentrate to the end. Josh and Alistair will go hard this weekend, and always do. So, yeah, it'll be the same again here. Just hopefully we can just be a wee bit closer all the time here now. The secret of success here has been cracked by Donegal's own Manus Kelly. For the past three years, he has reigned supreme. This time around, he'll stick with his R5 Hyundai and battle it out for ITRC points. You've always got a big smile on your face, but I, I see like an extra smile now that we're at home, sun's out, great atmosphere. Ach, look at this, is the jewel and the crown for us. Like, and uh, as you said, we are lucky enough to win this three years in a row. You know, it means so much to us, um, being from Donegal and all the rest. So. Listen, we're the familiar territory as well, and uh, we really enjoy competing. We love the sport back, so it's, everything is just like Christmas Day, like to us. So, And the crews head away from the rally's base at Letterkenny. The organisers have given the event a little shake-up and added some stages that haven't been seen in a while to keep everyone fresh, as well as sticking with the classics. The crowds are certainly out in force, with record numbers lining the stages. Back in WRC machinery, Declan and Brian Boyle, winners here in 2014, were leading after three stages, but only just. Nine-tenths of a second was their advantage over ITRC championship leaders Craig Breen and Paul Nagel in their WRC Fiesta. Not eligible for championship points this weekend, their objective was the outright win of the event. Flat crest 50, slight right past the road, 180, watch right over crest, the slow, 2 minus half, long, 170 crest and left tight the 2 minus, tightens over crest, neat, small gravel lines, power, day, flat crest, 180, small crest past the house, 80. What many maybe didn't expect to see was an R5 car leading for the first two stages. That car just happened to be Callum Devines, and he was showing full commitment in these early stages. They dropped back to third after stage three, but were only 1.4 seconds off the lead. Six left, 500 up the middle. 
turn the square right at the top, you'll see it. Sam Moffat is another driver to have tasted success here in Donegal in 2013. He and James Fulton were building their pace nicely, sitting in fourth. Not a huge amount of seat time for Gary Jennings this year, but that wasn't stopping him from showing us that his pace has not diminished. His co-driver, Rory Kennedy, is celebrating 40 years of competition, a stat worthy of recognition. I started off and I did my first uh, Donegal rally with James Cullen in 1979. He and I set out together and between us, uh, during all those years, we've won it six times between us. And uh, I was very lucky to have some fantastic drivers right through the years and um, kept safe. And here we are today in, what is it, 2019, and we're still at it. And hopefully for many more years to come, Rory. Alistair Fisher and Gordon Noble started strongly across the first three stages. After the first, they were second overall, but back in sixth at the end of the loop. They would drop down the leaderboard a little further in the afternoon with a puncture. Stay right for two left minus in the tidy. Line two right plus stay in nips early. Line up one left over crest 60. Crest mid jump flat 100. With a switch from an R5 Fiesta to a Hyundai, Josh Moffat was still adapting to his new steed. 17 seconds adrift of Fisher in seventh. With the weather teasing the competitors with the chance of rain, many had taken a compromised tyre choice for the first loop. Manus Kelly felt he hadn't picked right. He was very much in the mix, though, in a good battle with Josh. We clipped the bale in the first stage, and we think we've knocked our steering out. We've got the cars twitchy in the front, but look, we didn't have a good run on there. It didn't, didn't really come out properly, so listen, we'll keep pushing. Another Hyundai man, Marian Evans, making his Donegal debut, had struggled with fuel pressure issues on the second stage, dropping him about 20 seconds. He was eighth after the first loop. There were some frustrations also for Joe McGonagall. His Fiesta was misfiring, not the opening day he had been hoping for. Flat one left, 60, flat one right, 30. One right tightens, flat two in on the exit, 40, flat two right, 100, five left opens at the lane, 20. Desi Henry and Paddy Robinson had switched up to a WRC car for Donny Gaul. However, they were forced to retire from the event early after a myriad of problems. Brake issues on the opening tests and then a broken TCA on stage three. A slightly more dramatic retirement was in store for Joe Connolly. We were having a good run. We came to the chicane and in fact it was open, somebody had hit it, so we went through and just left the brake in that little bit late, got over the crown of the road and unfortunately ended up in the bog. So soft roll as they say, so we didn't hit anything solid. Out of the bog and back to the ceremonial start to catch up with the runners and riders in the national, kicking off with last year's winner, Ian Barrett. The car is emblazoned with Jewel, the rally is emblazoned with Jewel. Huge sponsor, huge event. How much are you looking forward to this weekend? Yeah, it's great. Um, back for another year. It's been a good week so far. Really looking forward to it. Um, it's brilliant. The club, everyone, um, the entries, the guys that are um, entered in the top sort of 10 and 15, both national and international, is probably the best it's been since back in 06, 07. So looking forward to it from a company perspective, it's great. And obviously from my side, then, um, can't wait to get going. The national times were fiercely competitive and the top three changed on each of the opening three stages. At the end of the loop, it was Ryan Lochran who was heading the pack. Ryan, talk to me about the morning out there. Three stages completed. Happy with the pace that you've been showing? Because it seems to be brilliant form so far. Oh, I'm very happy with the pace. Very surprised with our pace there. We didn't just expect to go as well as we were going. Um, second stage probably just wasn't as good as I'd hoped it had been. Um, with a bit of gear selection issue in there. But other than that, no, it's going very well. Everyone's working very well. Gary McPhillips and Stephen Thornton had led after the opening stage and were second after three stages. Just 5.3 seconds off the front pace of Loughran. <laughs> Damien Torish and Domo Makalani, who are battling it out for the modified title this year, were third after as many stages. The top three separated by just 8.2 seconds. Last year's winner Ian Barrett had led after stage two, but had dropped down to fourth. He was still very much in touch with the battlers, though. 
Jonathan Pringle and Paul Sheridan had a steady climb throughout the opening tests and sat in fifth overall. Declan Gallagher and the Toyota Starlet are always a spectacular sight to see. Running in the top five during the opening two tests, but dropped way down the order with electrical issues, picking up some road penalties to boot. Two right, go, 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 and a one left, go, go, go. Two right over bumps, go, 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 60. One right, flat jump. One right and a long one left, go, 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 80. Two left, going up the hill, go, go, go. Flat crest, two left again, go, go, 200, turn square right, give a run off. We're ready to run off. Sitting in six were Kevin Gallagher and Jared Callahan, just four tenths of a second behind Pringle. Fantastic looking car. Has it been a fantastic two stages though? Aye, not too bad. We're a bit cautious in the first one and that, so we're, we're just going to plane ourselves in. So, no, happy enough. The Darians were certainly out in force this weekend. James Stafford and Jeff Case pushing on throughout the opening loop. Back with the Mark IIs and Damien Gallagher and Mac Walsh were in seventh. The small margins throughout the top ten was indicative of the pace that was being set out on the stages. Kevin Eaves was up in eighth in his Corolla, but wasn't massively happy with the handling of the car. Kevin, we'll start to the morning. How's it going to be going out there for you? Hi, hi, we're good enough now. We're a bit off the pace there in the first loop and seem to be struggling a wee bit. The car's pushing on a wee bit in the front, but uh, hi, there's piles of grip out there. We're just kind of having our own battle, so... And there's a way to go. Aye, yeah, oh, definitely. We'll keep going, anyway. Mark Alcorn and John O'Donnell were climbing on the first three, a strong opening run from the pair. A car which was getting some serious attention was the beautifully prepared Mark II of David Bogey and John Rowan. They rounded out the top ten. For Gary Kiernan and Ryan Moore, it would be an early bath in Donegal. Gearbox issues forcing their retirement after stage three. Bad luck was also to befall Brian Brogan and Damien McGettigan. A roll on stage three, ending their rally prematurely. Modified championship leader Damien Toner jumped from 19th overall to 11th by the end of stage three. They'd chosen a hard tyre on the opening loop that wasn't serving them well in the conditions. David Condell and Paul Kelly, top point scorers in Killarney, were 13th overall. John O'Dugan and Kieran Marin were having a good run, but you can find trouble pretty quickly on these stages. Into middle of a crest. 40 down for a flat two left and one race, 250 to the bus stop. It looks open as well. 170 over the bumps, four left, don't cut. Don't cut this four, get a braking race and 250 up the mid. Go on. Oh. You got right. That's the same spot where Joe Connolly had his soft roll. Luckily, they could get back on the road. Once, the gate was kindly open for them. All right, just watch for oil pressure. 250 up the mid. Keep the head now. Tommy O'Connell had got off to a great start and was third in his class, but slid down the order by the end of the loop. 80, a 80. One left past 180. Care three left in and the three right. Three left in and the three right. And one left over crash jump. One left over crash jump. 100 over bumps. Left on crash jump. It's a big jump. 170. The slow three left over crest, only 40 on square right. Three left over crest, only 40 square right. Let's take a look at the top five overall here at the Jewel Donegal International Rally. Boy leads over Breen with the top five split by just two and a half seconds. It's a fierce fight here. Join us for more after the break.
welcome back to the Jewel Donegal International Rally. Out for the repeat loop of stages late afternoon and the weather was holding fair and the spectator numbers kept growing. Boyle headed into the final three of the day in the lead, lost it, then regained it on the final test. The times were tight at the top. Breen had moved into the lead on the second stage, but it seemed that he'd been giving Boyle some tyre choice advice. Bad move, maybe, when Boyle finished ahead at the end of the day, albeit by nine-tenths of a second. Two left, minus half long, tight, tightness to three plus, half long, 150. Late flat, one right over crest, don't. 40, right over crest, tight to one minus, big slowing, 90 slot, late five left, sharp, narrows, loose. Thirty right into care, slot late six left, big don't. Forty flat crest, one twenty. Three right plus short. Sam Moffat had a solid afternoon, fastest on the first test at Mouldy Hill to propel himself closer to the lead. In third, he was just two and a half seconds adrift of leader Boyle. Staying very much in touch with the WRC pack was Callum Devine. Confidence was running high in the Fiesta R5 and after six stages, he and Brian were fourth and only 13 seconds off the lead. It had been an incredible opening day from them. Lane, slot, square there, plus slippy. Repeat, lane, slot, square there, plus slippy. 200. Slowing. Care, four right, short three left, kink. It's narrow and slippy. You've 150 the far side of it. More middle over crest, into four right through the dip. Gravel, 60, two right at the wall, slippy. 100 turn, square left, neat. One sixty. For Gary Jennings, a battle now ensued with Devine. He'd lost position to Callum at the end of the day, and Saturday would be the start of the fight back. For Josh Moffat and Keith Moriarty, their day would be hampered by some technical issues. Fuel pressure problems, but they were strongly placed still in sixth overall. Manus Kelly hadn't been so happy with his tyre choice in the morning, but the afternoon was a different matter. Showing his class on the stages to hit home some competitive times put an even bigger smile on the three-time Donegal winner's face. Manus, opening day of your home event here in Donegal. And I tell you what, it's been a great day for you, some great times out there. Yeah, we were very happy, Bex. I suppose we made the wrong tyre choice this morning and uh, we struggled about the car was moving around a lot and we couldn't really get confidence. But the second loop then, um, we got on uh, the right tyres and uh, we pushed through and I'm um, very, very pleased with the times and keeping building on it just. The action in the National was red hot, with the top three separated by just 6.9 seconds after six stages. Ryan Loughran was out in front. Gary McPhillips was keeping the pressure on Loughran in front throughout the afternoon. However, a roll on stage six would end the battle for national glory. Ian Barrett took over second overall and was now just 1.2 seconds behind Loughran. What a fantastic battle we're yeah. seeing in the National right now. Just 1.2 seconds between you and Ryan at the end of the day. Good feeling out there? Yeah, good, yeah. Um, probably not the day like, we really wanted to start with with the stages. Um, quite tricky today for us. Uh, low grip levels on the stages, so our car is obviously um, more suited to more abrasive tyres. So, I know Kevin and the other Darian was struggling the same way. Over gravel and that sort of stuff, we'd have struggled a little bit, but um, happy to be here. It's funny, last year we were in second, I think on nearly the same time between us and, and Damien Tour. So great battle um, and a good day so far, but a big, big day tomorrow now, you know. Damien Torish completed the top three as we all eagerly anticipated the scorching battle ahead on Saturday. Damien, talk to me about the day here in Donegal. We've seen some great battles in the national so far. Are you happy with what you've put in out there today? Oh, I'm very happy. I probably couldn't have done much more, to be honest. So, um, no, I'm happy, am I? Huge way to go here still. You know, so many stages ahead, some classics coming up as well. Have you got much more to give, though? You've got more in the tank? It's not a lot. Maybe a wee bit more knowledge. Maybe I might 
helped me a wee bit, but there's not a lot left, and uh, it's a tight battle. So, no, enjoying it. Eh? Jonathan Pringle had continued to climb the leaderboard throughout the afternoon and was now in fourth. Kevin Eves wasn't too far behind, 6.7 seconds adrift of Pringle. Let's take a look at the Group N battlers now. Multiple champion Aidan Ray and Kieran McGrath and their Mitsubishi Evo 10 were leading the category with a good advantage over Niall Devine and Liam McIntyre in their Evo 9. Caution, crest and the three right sloppy. Only Erie and turn square left, don't cut. 2.30 out of it. 2.30, and turn tight square left, very narrow, 2.50 up over bumps. Six right and a flat jump, and a flat six right, the long flat six left, 80, five left pushing, flat crest five left, 200 over crest. And an unseen square right. Unseen square right. Come back early. Welsh boys Andy Davis and Michael Gilby, who were battling it out for Group N glory in ITRC2, were third in class and the only Subaru to break up the countless Mitsubishis. This one piloted by Michael Boyle and Dermot McCafferty. <laughs> Rounding out the top five were Willie Mavity and Martin Connolly. In the R2 category, Eamon Kelly, son of 2015 Irish tarmac champion Donna, was having a good run at home with a lead of 42 seconds over Johnny Mulholland and Charles Gallagher. The dynamic R2s providing a great stepping stone into the championship. As the crews headed back to Park Ferme, there was still a buzz in the air after the frenetic pace on the stages. The sun had shone, the crowds had gathered, and a local man led the rally. Boyle was a happy camper. To be ahead, you know, on, on the on the on the Friday evening is not bad. It's better up than down, isn't it? <laughs> it is absolutely. Yeah. Tell me, is there any banter between the drivers between the stages? No, it's all good feeling there. You know, even out in the last uh, couple of stages there, Craig was telling me what tyres I should be on, um, and I, I went and I done it. And to be fair, he was right. And <laughs> so that's the kind of carry on that's going on. <laughs> so he's giving you advice, and then you lead yes, at the end of the day. That's right. <laughs> Craig, what an opening day it's been here in Donegal. Although at the end of the first stage this morning, you were hankering after your R5, but how are you feeling at the end of the day? Yeah, it's slowly but surely the rest of the day has been better and better. Um, like getting the car more dialed into how, how I want it. So it's been enjoyable. Uh, it's been a long time since I've been in a battle quite like this. You know, everybody is so, so close. You know, less than, less than a second separating us on a lot of stages. So it's nice. Uh, you know, and only one day down, two big days to go uh, tomorrow and Sunday. Probably a, a bit more stages that will suit us in the next few days. So I'm. Uh, Happy my day's work and looking forward to the next two. Callum, you were leading the whole event this morning. A really impressive performance in the morning. It still stayed strong in the afternoon. Dropped down a little bit now. What's the feeling? Yeah, we're, we're, we're still going as hard as we can go, you know. Um, it's just them stages are far too fast for the R5 against them WRC carriers. But no, we're, we're happy. Hey, We just keep chugging away the gas there and the boys. And, um, yeah, but we're happy with times. At the end of a brilliant day one at the Joel Donegal International Rally, Declan Boyle leads the way in a tight battle over Craig Breen in second, with Moffat third, Devine fourth and Jennings fifth overall. Saturday is set to be a scorcher in more ways than one. Join us after the break as the battles continue.
Welcome to day two of the Jewel Donegal International Rally. It is beautifully stunning here and tranquil, but out on the stages, the battles are raging. It's fierce as we head into the longest day of competition. Over 120 competitive kilometers will entertain us today, and there may be a legendary stage included. Nokala is coming up. Super Saturday would again attract thousands of people. The crowds this year have been huge and they have been well entertained out on the stages. Climbing through the fields and getting the best vantage point, however high that may be. As the drivers queued to enter the first stage of the day, there was a lot of battle banter, all in good spirits, of course. But the fighting talk would have to wait. Stage seven overall was cancelled and the drivers moved on to Glen. Rally leader Boyle had a slender advantage heading into Saturday, but it didn't get off to a good start. A puncture in stage eight dropped him down to fourth. Then an off on stage nine ruled him out of the event entirely. Sam Moffat was quick off the blocks and put himself into the lead of the event on stage eight. After the loop of four stages, he had a 2.8 second advantage over Craig Breen. A strong morning for Moffat. Yeah, we had a great run in there, very happy with it. And uh, yeah, it's only the lead and there's nothing in it. So we need to keep pushing, don't we? Breen was giving it his all, but was coming up against some limitations in performance. It was still, however, tight at the top. Again, Callum Devine and Brian Hoy were keeping the boys in WRC machinery honest, still piling on the pressure in third and keeping ahead of Jennings. Gary and Rory had a bit of a mission in front of them to catch Devine. 21 seconds separated them, but you could guarantee they would be pushing to make headway in the afternoon. How is Mr Jennings feeling? You good? Yeah, it's grand. Enjoyed it um, through the lane. These boys in front are going very, very hard. I can see their brake marks in their lanes and there's, there's no way I can go in there, but I am enjoying it and it's, uh, yeah, it's Saturday. What else would you be at? Josh Moffat had made some changes to his new Hyundai R5 overnight and the times across the morning were looking good. Fifth overall and 27 seconds behind Jennings. Josh, I mean, the first time we're seeing you now in competitive form in this car, how's it been going so far? Yes, it's going very good so far. We're, we're making lots of changes and trying to dial it into to the way I like it, I guess. But uh, yeah, it's going good. Uh, a few more changes to make yet, but uh, yeah, it's all progress. Changes in which kind of direction with what exactly? It's very hard because every stage is slightly different and we're trying to, we're maybe improving it for one stage and it's affecting another one. So I suppose we're just trying to find a, a good balance for all the stages with the suspension and the setup. After a disappointing Friday for Fisher, he was on the move up the leaderboard from 11th to 6th across the morning. 30 over right, tight and square right plus round the bale into four left long stay in opens 30 short three left minus in line four right plus long Ali was a bit of a blow yesterday with a puncture but you're back at it today still a long way to go out there how did that first one go yeah we're second quickest through the lane there so we're pretty happy with that you know, the car feels good so yeah, we'll keep pushing um still a bit of action up front already this morning so we'll just keep going Manus Kelly was another who was shifting up the leaderboard despite a puncture. In eighth and just 11 seconds adrift of Marion Evans. Battle was on. That's a great championship and uh, great talented lads in it, you know, and uh, we're just glad to be on the pace with them this weekend, you know, and it's nice, I suppose, we're in home turf and uh, if we were going to get on the pace, this is the time to get on it now, so I'm delighted. Look, Bex, I'm, I'm thrilled to be on the pace and, and join the mix with the boys. Here, we saw a few issues for you yesterday. Everything running OK with the car now? Yeah, yeah, car's fine. Um, just getting used to the stages a bit. The boys have a bit of experience over me today, so now we'll keep pushing on, see how we go. It's... We've got the classic knock Arla coming out later. Yeah, I know. I'm looking forward to it, though. You know, that's why we're here, isn't it? <laughs> In the National, the day started with Lochran and Barrett separated by just 1.2 seconds. It was intense and it would continue to be. As stage seven was cancelled, stage eight was the first time we witnessed the battle resume and it was advantage Barrett. 
Well, that was obviously a good run because it's into the lead, but it's still really tight. Ah, yeah, there's nothing with it um, at all. So uh, a couple of seconds separated all of us. So uh, I will get back in now and we'll have another rattle at it. Lochran shot out of the blocks at pace, as was to be expected. He was a joy to watch through Glen Village. Dropping to second overall wouldn't dampen his spirit, however. Ryan, is some battle out there in the National. You just dropped now a second behind the lead. How did it go this morning? I went well. I suppose it was uh, disappointing to lose the first stage there. We were sort of geared up for it, especially. But no, I'm happy enough. I will make a few changes here in service, hopefully to try and suit these two next stages um, and see if we can stay with the boys. Tourish was hoping that his local knowledge would give him an edge out there today. It had got off to a good start, nibbling away at his rivals in front. It's fairly hot now, it's fairly hot, so uh, no, we had a real good run there, really enjoyed that stage, so uh, no, it's a good start. Fired up for the rest of the day? Oh, we're fired up now, that's it. For Jonathan Pringle, who was sitting in fourth, it would be a disappointing morning. He suffered mechanical issues on stage nine and retired. Kevin Gallagher was now up to fourth and had set some strong times across the morning. Joint fastest through Glen with fellow Darien driver Barrett. Also on form was David Bogey, now up to fifth overall in the national. Just behind him by three tenths of a second was Damien Gallagher and Matt Walsh. Getting every inch out of his Toyota Starlet was Declan Gallagher. Derek Hina on the notes here. After yesterday's dramas, they were up to seventh. Three left at the junction here. 60, one right, over, middle over, big jump, only 40, tight three right. Back off, back off, tight three right. Tight three right, over to two right, one left past the house, go, go, go. 230, down to big care, two left over, jump, chicane. 200, 100, two left here, over, jump, chicane. Jump into a danger, three left, tightens. It's been eventful so far here in Donegal, but how did that one stage go this morning? I Not too bad. We pushed as hard as we could in there, but the boys seem to have taken time out of us, so I don't know. We'll try maybe a harder tyre in the back and see how that goes, but uh, I had nothing left in there, and fair play to them, they took time out of us, so it's enjoyable. Showing full commitment were Mark Alcorn and John O'Donnell. Impressive times, but they did lose position to the charging Gallagher. Damien Toner was fully focused and now up to ninth overall. He passes Martin and John McGee here. Kevin Eves slipped down the leaderboard after he slid off the road on Glen. More dynamic Darien action here with James Stafford and Jeff Case. Into the afternoon and to a coastline which is known worldwide for playing host to an incredible stage which every driver wants to tackle. Fans make the pilgrimage every year. It's so special, even a wedding party drove the famous curves ahead of the drivers. For hours, the fans piled in, getting the best spots on the hillsides, awaiting the roar of rally cars. The scenery is stunning, the stage may be even more so. We could only be in one place, the most famous stage in Ireland. It's Nokala.
first in to knock Alla is rally leader Sam Moffat. A hugely impressive afternoon lay ahead. Fastest on both runs here, plus on the final stage, amassed an overnight lead of 17 seconds. That advantage was over Craig Breen, who seemed resigned to the fact that he couldn't match the pace of Moffat. Tyres had been a gripe throughout the day. 60, lead flat, two left, half long. 50, two right minus, half long, care. Double Titans keep in, into lead flat, two left, in over crest. Opens keep in, 30, slide right, 90, one right, far 80. Titans a two for 70, Titans minus long. Nips, 80, two right Titans keep very in over crest, 100. Devine kept up the momentum during the afternoon, but a spin on the second pass of Nokala dropped him some precious seconds. there in the middle of the late short two right plus in and short four left over small crest 53 right keep over crest 80 line four left and short four left again 160 turn slot square right four hundred Jennings had kept up the pressure throughout the afternoon and was having a good run. He was now within touching distance of Divine, just four and a half seconds away at the end of the day. Continuing to adapt and learn in his new R5 was Josh Moffat, in a solid fifth overall at the end of Saturday, but in no man's land in terms of a battle with big gaps of time around him. The Hyundai, though, is looking a little bit second-hand after the rear window shattered on a jump. Manus Kelly and Donald Barrett were in six at Saturday's close. From the times on the board, it was evident they were having a ball and showing the class of three years' worth of wins here. For Fisher, all the work to get back up the leaderboard would take a blow with this spin dropping them time their rear window missing after landing after a jump. Marian Evans wasn't faring any better in the luck department either. A puncture saw him down to his front right rim on stage 12. And this is the way it stands. Sam Moffat leads with an advantage over Breen of 17.3 seconds. What a day it's been here so far at round five of the Irish Tarmac Rally Championship. Stick with us, more action to come on the stages. Welcome back to the Jewel Donegal International Rally. Stunning scenery on dramatic coastlines, which are echoed in the fierce competition we're seeing on the stages, which everyone is thrilled to watch. In the national championship, it was hard to keep up with all the drama. Ian Barrett in his Darien took the lead on stage 11, but then retired on 13. Ryan Lochran led at the end of the day, but had a tussle with a chicane in Nogala, which damaged the steering and suspension and dropped him to third. Quick fix at service and he was back up to pace to retake the lead.
Hi, basically we took a chicane out of the very start of Nakala. So we did um, vent the cross member steering rack and the, all the front left suspension there. So I actually thought we were out of the rally to be quite honest. So um, uh, we managed to get out of the stage and aligned it myself at the side of the road near enough. And uh, so we'll go back in here now. The boys just changed everything there now and we're going to line back up again. So hopefully all be good. Damien Torish was right in the mix, now second overall and only seven seconds behind Lochran. <laughs> He may have had his challenges so far in Donegal, but the dynamic Declan Gallagher was in third in his Toyota Starlet. You have a fast three left at the sign, 60. You have a fast four right, don't cut to the car park, Titans. Four right at Titans, very long, two left over the crest. 40 down, one right, go, go, go. 130 down the middle for a late three right and caution very long three right. Late three right and caution very long three right. Titans. Titans 100. With the dramas for Lochran and some solid times from Kevin Gallagher, he finds himself in second place. However, it was short lived as he retired on stage 12. The Darians were not faring well. James Stafford suffered with a gearbox issue and could go no further. For David Bogey and John Rowan, their impressive climb up the leaderboard came undone on Nokala when they spun, clipped the front of the car and couldn't continue. A shame after a brilliant drive through Saturday. Into the afternoon tests and the famous curves of Nokala. Toner was setting some solid times and was now sixth overall. Toner's championship rival, David Kundell, was now within the top ten, ninth overall. <laughs> Making a storming comeback after yesterday's field trip excursion were John O'Dugan and Kieran Marin, propelling themselves up the leaderboard. Flat crest, 150, right up to the skin, right entry, three bills. Have a 80 turn tight hairpin left. It's tight, John O. left in. Another pair who'd made good progress up the leaderboard, only to have it all shattered were Tommy O'Connell and Thomas Wedlock. You can see the bonnet start to lift here. Flat one left, 60. To a flat one right over crest, 100. 100 now to a fast three right. To a fast three right. The bonnet pin broke and they lost over four minutes trying to fix it. Let's head into the bustling service park now and catch up with some of our crews. You know, take nothing for granted. Um, Craig's coming hard and the R5s aren't actually that far behind at all. So, um, yeah, we're going to push on and see how it goes. So much chat about Nokala. What did you think of it? Yeah, pretty epic. I have to say it was an awesome sight to see all the spectators up on the hill. You know, that's great to see rallying in such good shape again and uh, I hope everybody enjoyed it. Marion, a bit of drama. We've seen you have a puncture. What led to it? Uh, there was just early in the stage, the chicane had been hit. And uh, to get, get around it then, because the bales were all over the place, we just dropped a wheel on the grass and there was a rock in it. And I think it's just damaged the wheel and we drove 10 k's of the puncture, so not ideal. And it wasn't great on Narcala with a massive moment on Narcala and a bump. So we went under that last one and we got the mojo back and set a good time. So we're feeling confident now. Hopefully we can push on again and get back on the pace. Making his first trip to Donegal this year was the well-renowned hoonigan, Ken Block, famous for his feats of daring Jim Carner videos. Donegal is one of the stops on his Cozy World Tour and an event he's wanted to compete at for years. There's been huge support from everyone here. Wherever we see you, there's a massive crowd. 
<laughs> what does that feel like to have the support? Well, it's been very nice. Uh, you know, I've met a lot of Irish people around the world, and they're always very enthusiastic about motorsport and what I do. And it's, it's great. The, the enthusiasm for this sport here is amazing. The fact that there's more Mark IIs entered in this rally than probably exist in the States is quite cool. So it, it's just the atmosphere and uh, the whole you know, scene here, it's quite impressive and it's, it's quite enjoyable for me. Well, I wish you the best of luck for the rest of the event, Ken, thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Let's catch up with some of the other classes now, kicking off with Group N. Aidan Ray continued to lead the category and a commanding lead at that. He was also 13th overall. Andy, one left over bumps, one fifty down middle, caution long two left, over crest. Andy, 100 and fast, three left. 100 and fast, three left. 40, and the middle over jump, 80, and the slow one right over jump, only 60, and sudden five left. Sudden, fi sudden five left. Sudden five left here. 130, bump bridge. William Mavity and Martin Connolly were second in Group N. For Andy Davis, it had been a tough day. Off on the second run of the Glen stage, breaking a suspension arm. Luckily, the mechanics worked to get it back out so they could have a crack at Nokala. In the R2 class, Eamon Kelly and Connor Mohan continued to lead the event. They had almost a minute in hand over fellow R2 driver Johnny Mulholland and Charles Gallagher. Let's head into the historic section now. For Mark Fulvey, leader at the end of Saturday, this was his first time competing in Donegal, although from his times, you'd think he was a veteran here. Short four, and a long three left and a short five. The beat short five now. 120 down the jet five left. Five left, man, okay. And it's absolute press, 40 to one left over the crest, and only 64 right at the bottom. Four. And a two left into two right kink, and a one left 40. And short four left now down the bottom, short four at the pole. Something wrong with your tyres. Long she right over the gravel, and a one left coming up. Martin and Dara Doherty were keeping the pressure on Fulvey, just 7.2 seconds behind. Championship leader Duncan Williams and co-driver Cleon Williams were in third overall. The Vauxhall Chevette of Andy Johnson and Jim McSherry was in fourth at the end of Saturday's challenging stages. As ever, there was a big turnout of local competitors, so let's take a look at some of the Donegal club members as they tackled their home rally. Unfortunately, the final day of the event would take a tragic turn. On the opening stage of the day, Manus Kelly and Donald Barrett went off the road in their Hyundai R5 with devastating consequences. Co-driver Donald survived the accident, but sadly Manus succumbed to his injuries. We would like to pay tribute to a man who meant so much to so many. 
through his passionate rally in Korea, his endeavors in business and local government, his everyday life, and most importantly, his cherished family life. His generosity of spirit touched everyone around him, and his legacy will live on. He is, and forever will be, King of the Hills in Donegal.